Karen Crawford is not no, no, he ain't like that, bro. Mm. Karen Crawford is is is, is an overhyped bum, bro. I'm sorry. Somebody gotta say it. You're an overhyped bum, bro. You, go, I'm looking at the camera right now. You f suck, bro. Just. In a shocking interview, Ryan Garcia blasted Terrence Crawford, calling him out for a fight while labeling him as overrated and a bum. Meanwhile, there might be other fighters as well who believe that Terrence Crawford is not a boxer, which many might make him out to be, including Blair Cobbs, who pointed out that Terrence is a mediocre fighter who does not possess the attributes that he thinks he does, which is something that became quite apparent in last fight against Israel Madrimov, who despite losing the bout was able to outshine the champion. Blair stated, I didn't enjoy the fight, this is the thing. Personality wise he sucks. Crawford sucks. Looking forward to going against Bud soon possibly before the fighter moves up the weight class, Blair highlighted how age might be catching up to Crawford as he seems to lack the drive that he once had, which makes him extremely vulnerable against notable names like Virgil Ortiz and himself. Blair added, Bud and the flair fight would be a star against a very dull boxer Crawford. If he gets in the ring with me, he will get beat. He will lose. He will just simply lose. And that's the end of that. By the time we get in the ring, I'll be valuable far beyond him. The main point that Blair emphasized in his comments seem to be how in his quest for greatness, Terence might be undermining his potential opponents, which is something that can not only be quite disrespectful towards his others, but can also prove to be dangerous for himself, as with every passing day he seems to get sluggish and worn out. Blair also talked about the ongoing debate in the boxing world about Crawford not being prepared for a fight with elites in the upper weight classes including Canelo Alvarez. According to him, even though Terence has been successful in his mission of defeating world champions in different weight classes till now, this time he might not be successful as the fighters in the upper weight classes are far superior to him both in vigor and potency. Blair then advised Crawford to focus on his current weight class of 154 pounds and fighting boxers who are compatible with him. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely a, it's definitely too much and also um like what was what's the game plan for for somebody like like Canelo? Um yeah, no. It's just it's it's kind of just ridiculous, and um, he shouldn't be trying to chase that fight when he could probably be chasing something better, you know, something better that makes more sense. Another person who believes that Terence lacks start power is the eminent promoter Eddie Hearn, who thinks that though Terence Crawford has proven to be quite a talent in the current era of boxing, he still seems to have no charisma or personality that is required in the boxing business, especially if you want to be considered as a pound-for-pound -pound great and an undefeated champ. While drawing comparisons between Terence and other fighters in the industry, Eddie stated how fighters like Gervon Vanta, Tank, Davies, and Canelo Alvarez are not only excellent inside the ring but also make sure to maintain an intriguing public image which is something that makes them much more enjoyable for the fans and for the promoters, including the major stakeholders, ultimately resulting in them getting far better deals and perks than other fighters. What I said to you earlier, like, I think Terence is really funny. Like, I love the way he lives his life. I love the way he brings his kids, you know, if you watch his kids with a wrestling and stuff like that, he's like, he's just a winner. And I feel that you know, you, you've got guys who are really, really, really good and they're not really hell-bent on becoming a star. I'll put you in that category. I'll put Terence in that category. Maybe Shakur, where they, they, they feel like they don't really want to, like, Terence ain't bothered about going to premieres and, you know, like being on the front cover of magazines and stuff like that. But unfortunately, in the business, we have to try and make sure he has that kind of value commercially. So it's getting the narrative and, and the, the moments right to just showcase his personality a little bit. On the other hand, a recent and somewhat controversial statement issued by Eddie has garnered a lot of attention with fans and analysts speculating about its authenticity. In this statement, Eddie pointed out that Terence Crawford might be thinking about retiring from the sport altogether, especially after his last lackluster performance ag sint Israel Madrimov. To further validate his point, Eddie stated how the main priority in a fighter's career is making enough money and profit, which will last them for generations, and that is something that Terence has already achieved. Eddie stated, I don't think Crawford will fight again because I think he's made really solid money in his last couple of fights. He probably thinks he'll fight again, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Addressing the fight announcements made by His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheikh about Terence fighting Virgil Ortiz earlier next year, Eddie thinks that these plans will most probably not see the light of the day as Terence seems to have no interest in a fight of this caliber, as the only bout he seems to mention is the fight with Canelo, which according 
according to Eddie, is not going to take place anytime soon as Canelo seems to have other plans, including a possible rematch with his longtime foe, Dimity Bival. Eddie stated, I don't think he wants to fight Virgil Ortiz or Jaron Boots Ennis. I think the only way Crawford will fight again is Canelo Alvarez because he's got used to that pay. I think he's happy to sit out until the end of next year. He'll be just waiting for if the Canelo fight comes up. However, Ryan Garcia does not want Terrence to retire just yet as he wants to have a fight with Bud to prove that he is not the fighter that many make him out to be. Looking back at the fight that Crawford had with Israel, Ryan stated how though many believe that Terence is an undefeated champion who has always gained spectacular victories, he still has not faced a real generational talent in fear of getting pummeled. Making a bold comment, the young controversial fighter claimed that he will be the one who will finally beat Terence Crawford at 154, as he is the only fighter in this particular weight class who has the necessary attributes and skill set to get this job done. Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford. Why Terence Crawford? I don't think he's as good as people say he is. I mean, you could debate me on that. I think I'm a better fighter, faster, stronger. I'm in my prime. Uh, he didn't look good his last fight. Uh, I can fight him at 154 if he wants it. So you uh, truly think that Terrence Crawford's overrated? I do. Wow, he's never he's never lost, but you think he doesn't have any quality quality wins? I don't think he's ever fought a, a a generational talent ever in his life. Wow, and you're that guy. You, you think you're the, you're the first guy to give Terrence Crawford his first loss? Yes. Despite the continuous criticism that seems to be directed towards him, Ryan seems to be unbothered as during his recent interview, he stated that regardless of being away from the boxing scene, he is still deemed as one of the best fighters of this era, including names like Gervonta Davies and Canelo Alvarez. Ryan even went as far as naming himself to be the most prominent boxer among the fan base, who is not only applauded for his performance inside the ring, but also outside. Ryan stated, I know I'm the most Googled fighter in the last three months. There's three of us, me, Gervonta and Canelo that everybody is going to tune in. I think it's more so me and Gervonta. He added, I feel like I'm putting in more work to be the face of boxing. In this day and age on social media, you have to put in the work. You gotta do interviews. You gotta be there for the people. While talking about the performance that Terence has displayed in recent years, Ryan emphasized that the only somewhat notable fighter that Terence has gone against is Errol Spence, and the only reason that he succeeded in that bout was due to Spence not being in the proper condition to fight. Now what Ryan might have tried to allude to here is the eventful bout that took place last year in July between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence, which resulted in a shocking upset where Terence dominated throughout the fight and won with a ninth round technical knockout, which to this day has been a point of debate for a certain circle, claiming that Terence only got that win because Spence was unfit both mentally and physically due to two near-death crashes he had leading up to the fight, sharing his sentiments about this whole situation during an appearance on the Say Cheese YouTube channel. Ryan stated, Terence Crawford really hasn't beat anybody other than Errol Spence, who went through a car crash. Name one guy he beat other than Spence that's well known. He added, Crawford ain't like that. He's an overhyped bum. You're wasting everybody's money and you're not entertaining. You're boring. Come see me in the ring if you think I'm talking stuff. Despite the severity of the comments, it appears as if there might be some people in the boxing industry who agree with Ryan, including notable reporter and boxing analyst, Showbiz the Adult, who also thinks that in this industry you can't expect to remain untouched if you dream about becoming a world champion as sooner or later every notable fighter has faced a loss. Showbiz pointed out how though Terence is an exceptional talent, with an unprecedented skill set, he still tends to stay away from the ring for extensive periods, and when he does come back he decides to fight fighters who are not that much of a challenge in fear of getting beat and crushing his dream of becoming an undefeated champion in all divisions. Most fighters today who didn't do what Ryan Garcia said, and I'm talking about fighters who took on all the challenges and fighting everybody and staying busy and doing all those things, with great wins, those fighters got losses. Teofimo Lopez, lost. Canelo Alvarez, lost. Lomachenko, lost. AJ, lost. Uh, uh, Tyson Gypsy, lost. Further adding on to his statements, Showbiz stated that at this stage, immaculate skills and performance inside the ring are not everything for Terrence, as he has to come forward and fight guys who are not only more compatible with him when it comes to their size and experience, but also to fight the guys who the fans have been wanting him to fight as it will boost his somewhat mediocre reputation in regards of generating hype around his bouts. Showbiz stated, this is why this community is trying to change 
change the game. This is what I've been saying when I'm talking about y'all running out of time. Fight those fights. Fight those guys, all right. Even if you lose you, we are going to love you. We'll love you. We won't leave you. Looking back at the recent fight between Terence and Madrimov, Showbiz stated how that was a good fight in terms of Terence finally going against a fighter who matched him in brawniness and intensity, which became quite evident as the bout lasted till the 12th round with both fighters refusing to back down. According to Showbiz, if Terence really dreams of creating a legacy, then he should go into fights of this caliber and threat, no matter the result. He further added, Terence Bud Crawford, I think he should have taken on a young prime boots when he fought Mindramov, him being somebody that can match his size with a decent skill set, all of a sudden they went to distance. It's a pretty good fight, Madrimov in his prime, you get what I'm saying. Adding to this ongoing conversation, Gabe Rosado, a former professional boxer and middleweight world champion, also weighed in on the potential bout, adding another layer of insight. He believes that the push for a fight with Canelo has primarily come from Crawford himself. According to Rosado, this is largely due to Crawford's advancing age, where he may feel he's running out of time and viable opponents. Given the high stakes and limited opportunities, Crawford likely sees this as one of his final chances to cement his legacy in the sport. Crawford did that. Nobody said Crawford should fight Canelo. Crawford's the one that wants to fight Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really think it's like the fans. I think it's Crawford just calling out Canelo. During a recent discussion, Gobe Rosado shed light on Crawford's ambitions, suggesting that the desire for the Canelo fight is being driven primarily by Crawford himself. Rosado explained, but Crawford did that. Nobody said Crawford should fight Canelo. Crawford is the one that wants to fight Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Rosado emphasizes that it wasn't the fans or promoters pushing for the fight. It was Crawford who initiated the conversation. The callout, according to Rosado, is a product of Crawford's own desire to challenge himself. Rosado then elaborates on why Crawford might be eager to move up in weight. So I don't really think it's like the fans. I think it's Crawford just calling out Canelo. You know what I'm saying? He reiterates that this isn't fan-driven hype, but rather Crawford seeking to add another massive name to his record. Rosado then delves into the reasons why Crawford might be pushing for this fight, particularly as he continues to advance in his career. He stated, And the thing is, when fighters get older, it's natural for them to move up in weight because your body changes. Your metabolism is not the same, bro. So you carry a lot more weight. This comment by Rosado highlights the physical changes boxers face as they age, which often leads them to move up in weight. For Crawford, this natural shift could be contributing to his desire to take on bigger opponents like Canelo as he evolves as a fighter. Rosado further continued and emphasized that out if Canelo successfully defeats Berlanga, Crawford would be the logical next fight. The allure of two pound-for-pound -pound greats squaring off is hard to resist, especially from a business standpoint. He stated, well, if Canelo is able to get past Berlanga, I think the fight that makes sense for him would be Crawford. Just because, you know, I don't know what the figures are, but I'm sure it's really big. So I think that fight makes sense and then Benavidez would be the send-off. This remark emphasized the potential magnitude of a Canelo-Crawford clash before a potential final showdown with David Benavidez. While Rosado discussed Crawford's ambitions, Eddie Hearn provided a more skeptical view on Crawford's future in the sport. Known for his blunt assessments, Eddie Hearn recently stirred the conversation by claiming big-name fighters like Terence Crawford. Recently, in one of his interviews, he made a bold claim. We won't get the rematch. I don't think Terence Crawford will ever fight again. This statement has shaken up boxing fans, particularly those hoping for a Crawford comeback. Hearn emphasized that Canelo Alvarez will ultimately decide whether Crawford steps back into the ring. Chris Algieri, who is a prominent boxing analyst and former world champion, also believes that despite being an excellent fighter and attaining huge amounts of money, Terence Crawford has still not achieved the status of being a legendary boxer who has gone against some of the best names in the industry like Floyd Mayweather, who crafted a legacy which is still getting praised. Chris stated, he's never going to have to work a day in his life. His kids are not going to have to work. But as good as he is, he never had that generational money fight. Terrence hasn't been able to touch that and he deserves it. While clarifying his statement, Chris stated how at this point it is not that absurd of an idea if Bud wants to retire, given that he does not get into a fight with Canelo, as there is no other challenger that might help him get the legendary popularity and elite status that he longs for. Chris added, does Crawford need to do anything else? No, he's done it all. He is the man, he's the pound-for-pound -pound king, but in terms of the kind of money that he deserves to have made, he hasn't made that yet. So if that Canelo fight is still dangling, I understand why he's hanging around. Meanwhile, not everyone seems to have taken lightly to the comments made by Ryan, as during his appearance on ProBox TV, renowned analyst and former professional fighter Pauli Malignaghi blasted Ryan for his hypocritical comments, emphasizing that despite focusing on his own career at the moment, Ryan seems to issue absurd 
absurd statements which just go on to prove that he is more concerned about creating an image online rather than being a world-class fighter. Pauly also talked about how Ryan, despite his vast claims of being a great fighter, does not seem to possess many commendable attributes that make him stand out from the rest of the fighters in his weight class. Pauly also highlighted an important fact that Ryan himself seems to ignore prominent fights where he can be beaten, especially after his highly publicized defeat Agsent Gervonta Davies and his bout with Luke Campbell, where despite winning, he still struggled immensely. I don't think this kid wins a world title. I don't think this kid really wants to be a fighter. I think he just wants to be famous and more power to him if that's what he wants. But I think when, if you get deep enough in the trenches of any fight at this level, he will always come up short because I don't think he wants to be a fighter. And, 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 and I think that, you know, the Luke Campbell fight more so than making him grow, which I thought made him grow, getting up off the camp, missing like that, and making, and making, getting the stop stoppage. I thought he became a man that night. I think it's actually scared him because I don't think he's ever been the same since. And, and you could see that in, the, in his reaction to the adversity in the Davis fight, where instead of coming back and trying to roar, he roared back like he did in the Campbell fight. He just he basically just quit. Amidst the onslaught of backlash after this interview, Ryan has made another proclamation about his possible return to the ring later this year in December, despite being banned from boxing for a year based based on his recent suspension, which has garnered a lot of attention, because just a few days back His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheikh expressed his desire of organizing a bout surrounding the young fighter, most probably a rematch with Devin Haney under the banner of Riyadh season. You're gonna see me fight in December, it's gonna be a big fight, so stay tuned. Really? Okay, I mean, tell, can you tell me a little bit more about it? Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Being a harsh critic of both His Excellency and Ryan Garcia, Pauly believes that it is not suitable to make a fight like this happen, no matter the demand from the fans as it goes accent all the rules that have been meticulously crafted by various sanctioning bodies. He added on how even though His Excellency wants to make big fights happen, the ones which will bring in most of the numbers, he still can't ignore the fact that Ryan's attitude is not commendable under any circumstances, and that he should be held accountable for his recent behavior, rather than being boosting his ego with offers such such as these. And I think the idiocracy has been rewarded for Ryan Garcia instead of him, you know, paying consequences for it. And getting this kind of fight, for example, is a is one of those things that enables it. You know, um, you know, he's popular and he generates money. And honestly, the fact that you really don't have to promote the fight that much because you know he's got an idiot fan base that will probably just buy it anyway because they're mostly not boxing fans. You know, it, it sort of goes to show you the generation that he's in and probably why a guy like that is so popular you know there's a there's sort of a, a plateau as far as where the intelligence reaches here in this generation and it's not that it's not that bright meanwhile regardless of the opposition from prominent names in boxing ryan is hell-bent on getting inside the ring and fighting his longtime nemesis devin haney to finally put the rumors to rest that he only won because of the peds that were later found in his system expressing his desire for this bout ryan stated i would gladly beat his twice and I could tell the truth twice I beat him easy. This man will not beat me as I've ruined this man badly. I'm the better fighter. He didn't beat me the last time, bro. It's the bottom line. He didn't get close to beating me. With these statements, the boxing community also seems to be buzzing about the possibility of this fight with a stark majority, considering it as unnecessary. However, there is still a group who believes that if this fight takes place under the surveillance of His Excellency, then it can be immensely profitable and entertaining to watch for the fans given the rivalry between the fighters. Oscar De La Hoya, being Ryan's promoter and longtime supporter, believes that though he is not too keen about this rematch, especially considering everything that has transpired over the months, there is no doubt that if it were to take place, Ryan will triumph as he is the superior fighter out of the two. Oscar also recalled the days leading up to the previous bout between these two, revealing how despite being in somewhat of a bad physical and mental state, Ryan was still able to overpower Devin, so if they were to ever face one another again, their full potential, then there is no doubt that Devin will be defeated once again, only that it will be even even worse for him to recover this time around. Oscar stated, Do I want to see the rematch? No, it doesn't call for it, because I think Ryan just swept the floor with him. Ryan Garcia just made him look like an amateur. I don't care if they say he was on steroids and this and that. He was 30% up in that ring, 30%. Imagine if he was 100%. While talking about the chance of Ryan making a good comeback after his return to the ring, Oscar stressed how regardless of the past troublesome months that Ryan has faced during the peak years of his career, if he maintains focus and tenacity, then he can make a proper comeback and he might even gain the lost glamour that he once possessed before the whole scandal surrounding PEDs took place. Oscar stated, In order to lift yourself back up, 
you have to touch the floor, you have to slip and touch the floor, and I think if Ryan Garcia maintains focus, and I know he has the strength to do it, I think he will come back better and stronger. Sharing the same optimistic approach as his fellow promoter, Eddie Hearn also thinks that a rematch between the young fighters will not only give the fans a great show, but will also provide the fighters with a rare chance at redeeming themselves of their past mistakes. Being Devin's promoter, Eddie highlighted how in the last bout they overlooked certain aspects of weight which later come back to haunt them, but this time if a rematch is ever finalized they will make sure that both the fighters will have a fair chance inside the ring. But listen, time is a good healer. The rematch is going to be huge. I believe the rematch will happen at some point, but we'll wait and see. Sharing the same take in a later interview, Eddie stated, I think the rematch is a massive fight. I thought Ryan was fantastic. Although I thought that Devin underperformed, but at the same time showed an unbelievable amount of heart. So how good is it that two brilliant young fighters come together to put it on the line? We saw the reaction to the sport, and we got to keep going with that. So in the end, what are your thoughts on the issue? Do you think that these recent comments made by Ryan are validated? Do you believe that Terence Crawford is nothing but an overhyped fighter who seems to have lost his charm? Or do you think that he is still an immaculate fighter who is just trying to make the best fights for himself, including a potential bout with Canelo. Make sure to tell us about your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to our channel.